thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to this special event. We've got some great stuff to share with you this morning. So what do you say we get started? Today, we're going to begin with the iPod. Let me give you a little overview, and then we'll descend into some, some new products. The iPod has over a 75% market share in the US. 75% market share. We shipped over 60 million iPods by the end of last quarter, ending at the end of June. And as you know, uh, there are iPod accessories for almost everything. There's over 3,000 iPod accessories that let you use your iPod almost anywhere. And uh, I want to just highlight uh, one of the new places you can use your iPod. Uh, <laughs> as one of those 3,000 accessories. So uh, it's really great. The ecosystem around the iPod is, is just fantastic. Tremendous innovation going on there. And as you may know, we've been working with the automotive companies for many years now. And I'm very pleased to report that 70% uh, of 2007 model year cars in the US offer iPod connectivity as an option. 70% of the cars being sold now offer in the US offer iPod connectivity as an option. So it's really paid off to work with the automotive companies. We also launched something recently with Nike, uh, the Nike plus iPod sports kit. And uh, I just wanted to show you one quote uh, by the CEO of Foot Locker, a very major distributor of shoes. He called it the iPod shoe, which I love. But he said, <laughs> the iPod shoe is a phenomenon. It's too soon to tell, but I will tell you uh, that we sold tons of these shoes recently, and I had to recheck the number yesterday because I really couldn't believe we sold that many. So that's great. I wanted to, to quantify that for you uh, and report that we've sold over 450,000 Nike plus iPod sport kits, and it's less than 90 days old. So we are thrilled, and so is Nike, uh, with how this has taken off uh, in the early days. And so that's going really well. So that's a little overview of what's happening uh, in the iPod world. So let's delve into the products. As you know, we have three lines, three families of iPods, the iPod, the iPod Nano, and the iPod Shuffle. So let's start today with the iPod. Uh, as you know, the iPod is the best music player in the world, uh, but it does a whole lot more. It plays videos, music videos, uh, TV shows, and, and other kinds of video. It's pretty amazing. And so we're going to uh, enhance it today quite a lot. Uh, we're going to start off with the screen. We're going to make the screen 60% brighter, uh, which is really nice when you're watching videos. So you can go from this to this. Uh, you can go from scenes like this. And you, you notice it quite a bit. So 60% brighter screen. We're going to take the battery and we're going to increase the battery life when you're watching videos from two hours to three and a half hours. That's a 75% increase in video battery life. And on the big model, from four hours to six and a half hours of video battery life. We're going to include some new headphones. We've been working on these for 18 months. We've been studying over you know, 1,000 ears uh, to come up with just the right headphones. And uh, we think these are an improvement. Everybody has pretty different ears, but we think these are going to appeal to even more people. So they come standard with the new iPod. The new iPod also uh, finally solves uh, something that has been the number one request for a few years. You know, there's a lot of tracks in music that were meant to flow from one track into the next. You might be listening to Abbey Road or Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, or classical music where the end of one track is supposed to just connect seamlessly at the beginning of the next track. And unfortunately, in digital music, that just doesn't happen. Uh, gaps are inserted between the tracks in the encoding process, and most of the players uh, don't know or don't have the, 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 the power to actually play these tracks back to back. And so uh, we are, for the first time today, uh, going to put this back together as it was intended to be for those tracks that were meant to be seamlessly transitioned from one to the next and offer gapless playback. And that is for uh, songs that were encoded with MP3, AAC, Apple Lossless, Uncompressed, and uh, it's really nice to have gapless playback. So we're adding some new software features as well. Uh, one is instant searching. And so you can use the you can use the wheel 
to just input letters and instantly it starts finding things live with those letters in it. It'll find songs, it'll find artists, albums, podcasts, you name it on your iPod. So instant searching. And we're also adding a new feature so that if you scroll fast and quick scrolling, uh, the letter that you're passing by will show up so you can scroll even faster and know where you are in that process. So two new software features uh, on the new iPod. We're also adding something new today, which is games. Now, we've shipped a few simple games on the iPod, but these are really uh, much more visually robust and much, much funner games. And they are all designed for the wheel. So uh, we've got some, some fun ones, starting with Bejeweled, Cubis, Mahong, Mini Golf, Pac-Man, Tetris, Texas Hold'em, Vortex, and Zuma. And we've done some of these ourselves, some of these with EA and a few other partners, and it's been a lot of fun. And so let me just give you a little... So that gives you a little feeling for what they're like. And uh, they're just for iPod, and they will work on all fifth generation iPods. They're gonna be available worldwide starting today. You can buy them off the iTunes store, and they're gonna sell for $4.99 each. So games on the iPod. So let's summarize these features. 60% brighter display, 75% longer video battery life, gapless playback, exciting new games, search and quick scrolling features added to the software, and new headphones. But maybe the most important new feature we're adding to the iPod today is we're gonna make it affordable and accessible to even more people because we're lowering the price to $249. So the new iPod comes in two models a 30 gigabyte and a new 80 gigabyte model. And they both come in white and black. Uh, the 30 gigabyte model holds up to 7,500 songs, up to 20,000 songs on the 80 gigabyte. That's a new record for an iPod. And uh, 40 hours and 100 hours of video storage. And the prices, again, are 249 and 349 for the 80 gig unit. So uh, this is the lowest price ever for the iPod line, and we're really excited. These products are shipping starting today. So you can get them starting today. So that is the new enhanced iPod. It does video and a whole lot more. So now, let's take a look at the iPod Nano. This is the iPod Nano, and as you know, it is the most popular MP3 player in the world. So today, we're gonna introduce a second generation Nano, designed all new from the ground up, and this is what it looks like. It's made out of aluminum, and it's even thinner than the first generation Nano. It's beautiful. This is what it looks like. This is the top with the, the hold button. This is the bottom with the 30-pin connector and the headphone jack. And maybe the most obvious new feature of these new Nanos is we're bringing back colors. Now that we have aluminum, we can do beautifully anodized colors, blue, pink, green, silver, and black. And so these are the new iPod Nanos. Now the first generation Nano 
had a 14-hour battery life. We're increasing that to 24-hour battery life on the second generation Nano. And we have gapless playback. And we have those new software features of instant search and quick scrolling. Two great new software features for the second generation Nano. And we're including the new headphones as well. So second generation Nano, it's got a thinner aluminum case. It's really beautiful. Five beautiful colors that it comes in. 40% brighter display, 24-hour battery, gapless playback, search and quick scrolling, and it comes with the new headphones. The second generation Nano comes in three models. A two gigabyte model in silver, a four gigabyte model in silver plus the three colors, and an eight gigabyte model in black. 500 songs, up to 1,000 songs, and up to 2,000 songs on the 8 gigabyte. This is, a, again, a new record for an iPod Nano. And the prices, 149 for the 2 gigabyte model, 199 for the 4 gigabyte model, and 249 for the 8 gigabyte model. This is double the storage at the same price points of the first generation Nano. Double the storage for the same price. We've got some new packaging for the new Nano as well. And it's 52% less volume in the packaging for the first one. This turns out to be an environmental, environmentally great thing because it dramatically reduces the amount of fossil fuels we have to spend to move these things around the planet. So 52% volume reduction. And all of these new iPod Nanos are available today. Now, we've got some great accessories as well. The first one is the charger. And we've got a charger that's dramatically smaller Matter of fact, it's 40% smaller, and this works with the new Nano. It works with all the iPods. So if you're carrying around a charger, it just got 40% smaller. Of course, we've got the armband as well. We have the lanyard headphones. And uh, as you can see, they've got the new earbuds on them. And of course, the new Nano works with the Nike Plus iPod software and the shoes. So these or the second generation iPod Nanos, and we want to tell the world about them. So I'd like to show you a few ads. Let me start off with a TV ad. So can we go ahead and run that now? Woo. Did you like that? It's great. Thank you, guys. So here's some of the print that goes with that, bus boards, wild postings, billboards. Hopefully you'll start to see some of the stuff fairly soon, print advertising, and uh, to just get the word out that there's a completely remastered Nano. All right. Well, that is the new iPod Nano. Now we have the iPod Shuffle. The iPod Shuffle is really interesting. You know, we, we pioneered this concept of the tiny affordable shuffle player. And you know what? It worked. Because I'm, I'm very pleased to tell you today that we've sold 10 million iPod shuffles so far. 10 million. And um, so we're really happy with this. And today, we're announcing the second generation of the iPod shuffle. So let me show it to you now. This is it. Okay. It is a fraction of the size of the first generation. All right? It's a fraction of the size. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to make it bigger so you can see it here. <laughs> now, the number one thing that came back from customers using the first generation shuffle was wearability. Right? Tons of accessories to attach it to your body in one way or another. It was wearability, whether it's for athletic use or other uses is wearability. So we started with wearability. And the second generation shuffle comes in a beautiful aluminum case, but we started with wearability because it's got a built-in clip, right? Right in the back of it. I've got one right here, as a matter of fact. This is it. That's it. Let's clip it anywhere. And, uh, on the bottom, it's got the switches that say play linearly or shuffle, and 
turn it off or on. It's really sweet. And again, this gives you a feel for how small it is. It's beautiful. It comes with a dock, so you can just dock it. And USB 2, plug on the other end of that cable, plugs right into your Mac or PC to charge it, to sync it. And so it comes in one model. And one model has a gigabyte of storage, holds up to 240 songs. So this is the world's smallest MP3 player, certainly the smallest we know of. It's got an aluminum case with a built-in clip. It's the most wearable MP3 player we know of. One gigabyte holds up to 240 songs, 12-hour battery, USB 2, and it comes with the dock and earbuds. Here's the new packaging for it. We're going to sell it for $79. taking orders today for this, and we will ship them in October, in plenty of time for this holiday season. So we are really excited about the second generation iPod Shuffle, the most wearable and smallest MP3 player in the world. So that's the story with iPods. I wanted to talk about that first and let you know what we're up to here. But as you know, iPod is only part of the story because it's iPod plus iTunes that makes this all so magical of an experience for us. And so what I'd like to do now is talk about iTunes. iTunes has a market share of 88% for legal US downloads. 88% market share of legal US downloads. We have sold customers, have purchased and downloaded over a billion and a half songs from iTunes now. Now, if you look at all the music that's legally distributed in the US on CDs and online, let's take a look at where iTunes stacks up. The number one is Walmart, right? They sell tons of physical CDs. Same with number two, which is Best Buy. Same with number three, which is Target. And same with number four, which is Amazon. These guys sell physical CDs. For the first time ever, a pure online company has made it into the top five. iTunes is now the fifth largest reseller of legal music in the US. And we are on a trajectory to pass Amazon to become number four the first half of next year. <laughs> the US, there are iTunes music stores in 21 countries now. And you know what's great? It's number one in every single one of those 21 countries. Number one. So this is iTunes, the app that we know and love. And today we are introducing the most significant enhancement to iTunes since we introduced it in 2001. iTunes 7. And here it is. Now you could say, well, that doesn't look that different, right? iTunes, iTunes 7, they look pretty similar. Well, they're not. Let me show you the difference. Let me just start off with the source list over here. This is where you select what you're going to be working with, where you organize and find your music. So the first thing about it is you can see that we've divided it into sections, library, store, devices, and playlists. The library now doesn't just have one big library, but has separate libraries for your music, your movies, your TV shows, your podcasts, your audio books if you have them. Whatever you've got, it has a separate library for so you can find things much, much faster. It's a much better way to organize. The iTunes Store has its own section. Devices have their own sections, iPods, CDs that you might be ripping. They come and go. If they're there, they have their own section. And playlists. Right? Very, very simple and straightforward. It's a very nice improvement. And that is the first thing that's different. Now let me focus on something else that's new. The view. We've added some new views to iTunes 7. So this is a switch, a three position switch. And it controls the view that you're looking at. So here's my music library. And I'm looking at the list view. Right? But we've added a second view now called album view. 
and it puts the album art up there, and it puts all the tracks that you have from that album, so you can scroll through your music library and look at it by album, right? It's wonderful. Now, obviously, if you don't have the album art, this isn't as sexy. And so, you know, if you buy songs from the iTunes Music Store, we give you gorgeous album art. But what if you rip them from your own CDs? You don't have the album art. Well, today we're announcing that we're going to be giving free missing album cover art for all the music in your library if you have an iTunes account. So if you have an iTunes account, iTunes will automatically download it. Now, we may not have everything, but we've got three and a half million songs worth of album artwork. So the chances are pretty good we've got what you need. And if you have an iTunes account, iTunes will automatically download it for free. So album view is just stunning. But there's something even better. And that's the third view. This is called cover flow view. This enables you to rapidly find what you're looking for by the album cover. And not only that, it allows you to rediscover music you already own. It is the coolest thing. And I'll show it to you in just a minute. But this is not just for your library. This works in playlists, too. So in playlists, you've got list view, you've got, you've got album view, and you've got cover flow view of every playlist. And it's not just for music, either. Let's go to TV shows. Right? I can view my TV shows by, by list, but I could also use album view. And what it does is it puts artwork for each show up and puts all of the episodes from every season that I have of that TV show right next to the artwork for that show. And I can even find my TV shows with cover flow view. So it works for everything in the system. And it's pretty amazing. And we think the views, the new views are going to be one of the most popular new features in iTunes 7. Now, we were just talking about TV shows. Let me give you an update there. We announced TV shows uh, last October, so less than a year ago. Customers have purchased and downloaded over 45 million TV shows. And let me show you what's transpired in that year. We started last October with five shows, only five shows. And we've been adding them since. We now have over 220 TV shows. We started last October with just one network, ABC. We now have over 40 networks, including every major network. So look at how we've grown month by month in less than one year, we've gone from five shows to over 220 shows, from one network to over 40 networks today. We're adding a new network, just want to tell you about, the NFL Network. And uh, they're bringing the whole 2006 season of NFL film highlights to iTunes starting today. And you can buy it per game, or you can buy a season pass where you can pick your favorite team and the highlights for that team Games are automatically downloaded into your iTunes library as soon as they're available. So this is kind of cool. Now, all of this video is encoded with the best video encoding technology in the world, H.264. And up until now, we've been delivering it at a resolution of 320 by 240, which works great on iPods and is pretty good on your computer. Today, we are taking that up a notch. We're going to increase the resolution four times and all video will be delivered at 640 by 480. Music videos, TV shows, everything. So instead of, again, getting this, you're going to be able to get this. Four times higher resolution. Now, iTunes 7 also features gapless playback, as you might have guessed. And there's some other really cool things I want to tell you about. Number one is you can now manage your iPod from right inside iTunes. You know, before we've had to go to preferences to set things about what we wanted to sync with our iPod. Now you just click on your iPod and boom, it shows you, it gives you a summary of what's on your iPod. We've built the installer right into iTunes. And so if you want to go ahead and if there's some new software out that you want to update, the updater is built right in. And so you can just hit a button and update your iPod right from iTunes. In addition, there are those tabs across the top. And you can set what you want to get on your iPod. If you want to go ahead and if there's some new software out that you want to update, the updater's built right in. And so you can just hit a button and update your iPod right from iTunes. 
In addition, there are those tabs across the top, and you can set what you want to get on your iPod. So let's go to TV shows. I want to show you something really cool we've added. Under TV shows, I want to highlight this. It's a way to automatically decide what you want on your iPod in terms of TV shows. And here's how it works. You can just say, I want to sync the 10 most recent unwatched episodes of all TV shows, or you could even pick the shows. Right? If I like Monk, if I like Lost, I can say, give me the 10 most recent unwatched episodes of those two TV shows, and whenever I sync my iPod, they'll be put on. Now, if I play them on my computer or my iPod, iTunes knows about it, and it'll take, take that episode off the next time I sync with my iPod and put another one on. If I buy a new one that's more recent, it will exchange that for the one that's least recent. And it will always keep my iPod up to date with the 10 most recently unwatched episodes of those TV shows I want. So we're beginning to automate this process and making it even easier to decide what you want on your iPod and what you don't. Another really cool feature we've added to iTunes 7. This is the ability to more easily move content that you've purchased from the iTunes Music Store between your various computers. So let's say you have a computer at home and at work. It could be two Macs, could be two PCs, could be a mixture, doesn't really matter, but they're both running iTunes 7. And they're both authorized with your account. They're both authorized for the same account. You can now take your iPod and sync it with your computer at home, say, carry it to work, and that content will automatically sync back up to your work computer if it's authorized with the same account. And so you can transfer content. You can transfer content you've purchased from the iTunes Music Store between authorized computers using an iPod. So album and cover flow views. We think these things are going to be really hot. New source organization, gapless playback, four times higher video resolution, integrated iPod management right inside iTunes. You can transfer content you've purchased from the iTunes store via your iPod. And we have a new download manager as well, so you can track what's being downloaded and change the priorities, et cetera. And so what I'd like to do now is give you a demo of iTunes 7. All right. So. I've got my uh, music library here, and uh, you know we can go and play songs, obviously. Um, pick anything you want. So what I want to do now is, is you see the source list with my separate movie library and TV shows here and podcasts, et cetera, audio books. And uh, let me go back to music and show you album view. So there it is. This is album view. And I can just scroll through my library by albums, and it's really pretty wonderful. And, you know, in some cases, I have the whole album. Sometimes I only have one song. And uh, it's really easy to find stuff. Now, let me show you cover flow view. Go to the third view up here, and boom, there's cover flow. Now, I can resize this to be smaller or larger. And I can just scroll like this through my albums. I can do it one at a time if I want. <laughs> you know, scroll all the way to the end. It's pretty wonderful. And uh, you can just click on an album to play it. So it's a wonderful way to find things, but it's also a wonderful way to rediscover your music library, you know? Uh, that was nice. And, uh, <laughs> you know, these, uh, these are sorted by, uh, uh, by album. I could also sort them by artist if I want. And now it just changes the sort on cover flow. And so I can just start off and uh, see, see it uh, 
alphabetized and sorted by, by artist, with Beck in the front and Dylan, and et cetera. Right? Pretty neat. OK, other amazing new features. Uh, I want to show you gapless playback. So let's go to gapless. And I've got, uh, I've got a Beethoven symphony here. I'm going to start this uh, right at the end of the symphony. And um, you'll see it progress to the next track seamlessly. And let's try a track off uh, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. So that's what it's like. And you know what's great? This is not for just new music you buy. iTunes 7 goes through your whole library and finds those songs that were meant to be played gapless. And only with those songs does it tweet it all back together. So this works with your whole library. You don't have to buy new songs to have gapless playback. Um, I want to show you the uh, management on iPod. Again, here I can see what's on my iPod. I've got a bunch of audio. I've got some video. I've got some photos. You can see down below I could update my iPod if, it, if there was some new software out, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, again, let me go to TV shows and again show you. You know, I could say I want to sync the Yes, I do want to sync TV shows. I want to sync the three most unwatched episodes. I could say, you know, five most, ten most, all of them. Uh, I could sync my most recent episodes, whether they're watched or not. I could select TV shows and say, well, I want 24 and, and Lost and, uh, and Monk. And it would automatically keep the three most recently unwatched episodes I own on my iPod of those three TV shows. So pretty cool. And we can manage our iPod that way. Uh, and uh, let me just show you games. If you buy any games, uh, game shows up in your library here. And this gives you the instructions on each game uh, and how to use them right here in, in iTunes. All right. Now I want to show you some, some uh, video. So I'm going to go down here to music videos. And uh, again, music videos, just with cover flow, I can take a look at them right here. And I'm going to play this John Mayer video. Notice we have on-screen controls here now as well. So let me go ahead and make it for you. So that gives you a feeling for the quality now at 640 by 480. Let me go into TV shows. I'll play a TV show as well. Uh, let's see. I want to play a CSI here. And we'll just go ahead and play this. So you get the idea. And again, this is an awfully big screen. So uh, 640 by 480 video is really pretty, pretty spectacular. So that is, uh, those are some of the new features in iTunes 7. And uh, we think you're going to really like them. In particular, the album and cover flow views, gapless playback, and the dramatically increased video resolution. So iTunes 7 is available today. And it's a free download at iTunes.com. So I hope you all have a chance to get it. So in one fell swoop, we've gone from this to this, iTunes 7. But there is one more thing. <laughs> and uh, that is movies. Today we're going to talk about adding movies to the iTunes store, the whole iPod iTunes experience. First, I want to go back to TV shows and again remind us we started off with five shows in one network. And in less than a year, we have 220 shows and 40 networks, the largest selection of online television programming in the world. So today, we're starting out with films from Walt Disney Pictures, Pixar, Touchstone Pictures, and Miramax Films, four studios owned by the Walt Disney Company. And today, we are making available over 75 films online, starting today. We're going to be adding more every week and every month, including in the next few months, two movies that are today the number one and number two movies of the year, Pirates of the Caribbean and Cars. Movies are going to be available on the iTunes Store 
the same day as they are released on DVD. So what are we going to price them at? For new releases, we are going to price them at $12.99 for pre-orders and during the first week of sale on the store. Movies will generally go up for pre-order about a month before they're released, and during that time, and during the first week on the store, they are $12.99. After the first week, they go up to $14.99. Then we have library titles. Most library titles will be priced at $9.99 every day. And these are great films, like Shakespeare in Love, Good Will Hunting, The English Patient, O Brother, Where Art Thou, Enemy of the State, The Insider, National Treasure. All of these movies and more are available today for $9.99. This is what the new iTunes store looks like. It now has movies integrated right into it on the home page. And you can go to the movie store, and this is what it looks like. And yes, you can actually look at new releases and pre-orders with CoverFlow right inside the store itself. And when you decide to buy a movie, it's downloaded in near DVD quality at 640 by 480 resolution. And if you have modern broadband, which is five or six megabits per second, you can download these movies in about 30 minutes with five megabit per second broadband. Now obviously, if your broadband's slower, it's gonna take longer. But more and more people are getting this kind of connectivity, this kind of rates of broadband into their homes. So 30 minutes with five megabits per second. And you can start watching the movie as it's downloading in less than a minute. So you can watch the movie as it downloads. Here's the download manager with movies on it. Of course, you can be downloading more than one movie at a time. You can switch the priority. You can pause downloads to give all the bandwidth to another. It's very, very simple to use and most people won't even have to go to the download manager. And once your movie is downloaded, you can go to your library and find it with CoverFlow. And of course, you can sync it to your iPod. Again, up to 100 hours of video on the 80 gigabyte iPod. So, movies, near DVD image quality, Dolby surround audio, same day as DVD release, available the same day on iTunes as they're released on DVD, you can pre-order with one click. The usage rights are exactly the same as they've been for TV shows, which has been super successful for us. Parental controls have been extended to include MPAA ratings. And we hope to take this international in 2007. So what I'd like to do now is just show you what the quality of these movies looks like. So let me go over here and uh, just go to the iTunes store. And here's the new store. And we can uh, not only look at, uh, not only can we look at uh, music, but we can look at movies and TV shows and some popular genres that we visited up here in new releases. But let's just go to the movie store. And this is the movie store. And here are new releases right here, right? And Library titles I can look at as well. Featured library titles. Boom. Just go through and pick something out right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select Pirates, one of the top library titles. And uh, let me just go ahead and show you a preview. And so every movie has a really nice, high quality trailer. So you get the idea. Every movie has a free, high-quality preview with it. And let's say we purchase Pirates. We can go to our movie library over here. And again, using CoverFlow, if we want to, right? Just look through and say, oh, there's Pirates right there. And we can go ahead and play this, if we'd like. So that gives you a feel for the video quality here. We think it's pretty doggone good. I'm going to go back to the. Uh, to the movie store here, and uh, 
Let me go ahead and uh, look at this cars pre-order. You can pre-order cars starting today. And uh, you know, it's $12.99 on a pre-order. And let's just go ahead and again look at the trailer. Hook them up. So we can pre-order cars here. We can also do things like, you know, click around. John Lasseter is the director of cars. I can see what other movies there are available from John, et cetera. So this gives you a feeling for what we can do now with movies on iTunes, the quality that we can deliver. So again, near DVD image quality, Dolby surround audio, Movies available the same day that they're released on DVD. You can pre-order them with one click weeks in advance. The usage rights are broad. They're the same as what we've offered for TV shows that has been so successful for us. Parental controls have been expanded. And uh, we're really excited about this. So today we launch with Walt Disney Pictures, Pixar Animation Studios, Touchstone Pictures, and Miramax Films, four studios owned by the Walt Disney Company. And it's my pleasure right now to introduce Bob Iger, the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, to say a few words to us. Hey, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's hard to believe that it's been a year since I was up here in San Francisco announcing that ABC and Disney were going to make just five shows available for the iTunes iPod platform. A move that many people in the business said was breakthrough, which is a pretty powerful word. In reality, I think they were right, it was breakthrough. But deep down, we knew that the marriage of great content, shows like Lost and Desperate Housewives, with great technology and of equal importance, a great user interface, is truly a killer application. And so we're here today to take the next step to make a step in what we believe is going to be a natural progression of moving media from traditional platforms to new platforms. You know, in reality, uh, movies are an important part of our culture, certainly an important part of our company. People love to watch movies on the big screen, that feeling you get when that curtain has come up and those trailers end, the credits start to come up, and there's pirates or cars. It's a great feeling. We also know people love to watch movies at home, mostly on DVDs, whether you're watching it alone, with your wife or a date, uh, or with your family. Now we're making movies available on this new service, on this new platform, giving people basically more opportunities to buy movies, more places to watch those movies. And Steve mentioned Walt Disney Pictures. We basically have four labels at Disney. He named them all, Disney of course, Miramax, Touchstone, and during the past year we added Pixar. And we're going to be making movies available from all four of those labels, about 75, as Steve said. And I know we mentioned titles, I'll repeat them again. Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl will be up right away. Sixth Sense, which is a touchstone film. The Pixar films, Incredibles, uh, Cars coming up, of course. Miramax titles like Shakespeare in Love and English Patient. Great Disney classics like Cinderella and Bambi. And of course, in time, while most of these are library films, we'll be making films available on this platform on a day and day basis. That is day and day to when people can actually go out and buy the DVD. Now, we've had a great year at Disney in the movie business. We have the number one and number two movies of the year in terms of box office in the United States and Pirates, uh, uh, not Curse of the Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, I get them all confused and cars, and in fact, Pirates crossed a billion dollars in global box office just uh, this week, a billion dollars, so it's the third highest grossing movie in the history of the business. I want to make one brief introduction, that's Dick Cook, who's the chairman of the Walt Disney Studios. Dick, if you could stand up wherever you are. A quick bow to Dick Cook, thanks. The other thing I want to mention is Apple. As you would expect, Disney chooses its partners very wisely. 
We look for partners that, like us, believe in quality, that really get it in terms of creativity, uh, and that really have the consumer top of mind. They're creating product for the consumer that's reliable, that the consumer actually can access in a, in a relatively simple and easy way. Extremely important. Now, Apple does just that. So while when we put TV shows on, people said it was breakthrough, we knew we were in business with a great partner, and a year later we know that the consumer has indeed spoken because the success of television shows on this platform has been enormous, with Lost being the number one downloaded television program on iTunes and iPod over the last year. So we're confident that movies are going to work as well. Looking forward to getting them up on the platform. Very thankful for the opportunity to work with Apple. And Steve, you want to come back? We congratulate you on the array of great product you've shown us today and on this next step. Thanks. And thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. So, you can now buy movies on the iTunes store. And they're now playing on a computer near you. And they're now playing on an iPod near you. So that's movies. And I hope you all go out and buy a few, because it's really cool. <laughs> OK. So let's summarize what we've seen today. A new enhanced iPod. It does a whole lot of stuff and now lets you watch movies on the go. Movies in your pocket. A ground up new design for the second generation nano. Aluminum, thinner, colors, 24 hour battery. Amazing new product line. It's going to be a giant hit this holiday season. And the second generation iPod Shuffle. The smallest MP3 player in the world, the most wearable MP3 player in the world. And iTunes 7 to drive them all with new album view and cover flow view. And on top of it all, movies. So I hope this gives you a feeling for what we've got lined up for this holiday season and for where we're going. Uh, what I'd like to do is have all the folks here who have been a part of engineering, marketing, doing the operations and finance for all these products from Apple, could you please stand up? I'd like to give everybody a round of applause. They've done a great job. People have been working really, really hard. So thank you. But there is one last thing <laughs> that I'd like to talk to you about today. Now this, this next thing's a little unusual for us. It's a sneak peek of a product that will be announced in the first calendar quarter of 2007. We usually keep things pretty, pretty corralled until we're ready to ship them. But in this case, I think it completes the story and to understand where we're going, I'd like you to get a sneak peek of this. So we decided to go ahead and, and show it to you today. So we've now got music, and TV shows, and audiobooks, and movies, and all sorts of great digital content on the iTunes store. And uh, you can take that content, again, whether it be music or TV shows or movies, let's focus on movies here, and you can purchase it and download it over the internet to your computer. It can be a Mac or a PC. I'm going to choose a Mac here because I'm biased, but that could be a PC too. And you can take that content and enjoy it on your computer, whether it's a desktop or a notebook. And you can also sync it to your iPod. And it's really great. What about that big screen flat TV you just bought last weekend? You'd love to be able to, say, watch your movies on that, right? So what are we going to do to complete this picture? Well, you need a box to drive that big screen TV to play movies. I mean, if you want to play DVDs, you've got to go out and buy a DVD player, right? Well, you've got to go out and somehow get a little iTunes player here to play this stuff. But how is this box going to talk to the computer? Do I want to string cables throughout my house? Because my computer is probably in my den or in my 
some other room in the house and my TV is in the living room or wherever it might be. So I'm going to talk to it using wireless networking. And that's going to get the content from my computer to this box from the box onto the TV. Make sense? Right? That's what we'd all like to do. We don't want to tear up our walls to string cables. So let's talk about this box. This is the missing piece. Well, here it is. This is what it looks like. And uh, internally, we call it ITV. It's going to let you enjoy your media on your big screen flat TV. Right? That's what it's for. Now, it's a code name internally, ITV. We've got to come up with a final name before we introduce it in the first calendar quarter of next year. We're just going to call it ITV today. Now, let's look at what ITV gives us. Let's spin it around, look at the connectors on the back. First of all, what it doesn't give us is a power brick. It's got the power supply built in it because you don't want a bunch of power bricks hanging around your big screen flat TV. Uh, so it's got the power supply built in. It's got 802.11 wireless networking built in, industry standard for home networking. Talks to PCs and Macs and everything else. We've got a USB 2 port and we've got an Ethernet jack. In case you do have a terrestrial network, you can, you can use it as well. Now let's talk about getting the video out onto your TV. We've got an HDMI connector. This is the new connector that all big screen flat TVs have. That you can, with one cable, you can send digital video and digital audio over to the TV. So it's got that built in. If you don't have that, it's got component video and analog audio. And it also has digital audio via an optical cable, if you want to use that. So it's got really nice, very simple complement of ways to hook up to your TV. So ITV is controlled with our very simple remote, easy to use. And you can just hook it directly to your big, flat screen TV. Or more likely, you probably hook it to your set-top box, just like your DVD players hook to your set-top box. Instead of number three for your DVD player, you just go number four for ITV. Or if you've got a big receiver, you can hook the sound into that. Pretty much whatever kind of setup you've got, ITV just hooks up. No problem. And so let me go ahead and just show you what this thing does. I happen to have one right over here. And uh, <coughs> this, is, uh, this is it right here. That's all it is. Very simple, simple little box. And more importantly, I have a working one right here. <laughs> and uh, so let's get it up on the screen. And these are probably the most gorgeous graphics you've ever seen on a TV set. Uh, and I've got a real big screen flat TV here, so. Uh, <laughs> we got movies, TV shows, music, podcasts, photos, and some settings. So what do you say we, uh, we start with movies? We go into movies. And uh, first of all, iTunes is going to you know, probably present some information here, show you what's new on iTunes. And the artwork will just uh, float by here. But we might want to go and select a movie. And let me just show you some, some cool things here. Uh, let me go down to The Incredibles. And uh, again, if I just hold here for a minute, it gives me a gives me a little synopsis of the film, tells me about the cast, the directors, the producers, gives me the length. And I want to play it, I just push it. Pretty cool, huh? And again, these are the same movies I downloaded and have on my computer and sync to iPods. The same exact file plays on my iPod, my computer, and my big flat screen TV. OK, let me play you one other one here. Uh, I just want to play a little bit of Pirates. Again, I'm going to let this run for a while so you can see the quality of this again. We're very, very happy with how this has turned out. That gives you a feeling for the quality uh, that you can see on your big, flat screen TV. Now, let me go up and just uh, show you another cool thing that we can do. Uh, again, because we have uh, wireless networking, we can use your home network to go out to the internet and go to apple.com where we have the the, the most popular movie trailer download or movie trailer site in, in, in the world. And we can view movie trailers right from your couch on your big flat screen TV. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, uh, you know, go to theatrical trailers here and uh, you know, pick one. I, this is a movie that I'm interested in, All the King's Men. So let's take a look at the trailer. Pretty cool, huh? So you can look at your favorite movie trailers sitting on your couch, streaming over your home network through ITV. 
All righty. Now what I'd like to do is uh, I want to go back and uh, go to TV shows, just show you what it's like to watch a TV show. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, let's go down to the office here. And uh, here's a, a fun episode, actually. <laughs> so you get the idea. And uh, so this is what we can do with TV shows. And again, I'm just doing this all with this little remote right from here. So let's go down to music. And again, we're all familiar with uh, what that might be like. Again, we can look at our beautiful album art just uh, strolling on by. And I might want to go down here, let's say, oh, let's say artists. And uh, I love Bob Dylan, so I'm going to pick Bob Dylan. Here's all my Dylan albums here. And, uh, you know, Highway 61, let's say, you know. So, again, you know, a lot of us have our stereos hooked up to our TVs, right? The best stereo in our house now in our home entertainment system. And uh, so it's nice to be able to listen to music. Let's go to podcasts now. We can actually watch podcasts on our big screen, big screen TV. So I put one on here. And again, these are, you know, sometimes uh, have a large dynamic range of professionalism. But... Uh, <laughs> But they're pretty great, and some of them are a great source of, of what's going on. Hello and good Wednesday. Today we have an interview with Jeff Pulver of Pulver.com in anticipation of next week's VON conference in Boston. But before we give you, Jeff, a word on this coming Monday. So again, you know, you can watch podcasts on your big screen TV with your couch. It's pretty cool. All right. And uh, then the last thing I want to show you is photos. You know, photos are great because Photos are in high def. You know, the sensors on the, all these digital cameras now have so many pixels that they, they are high def in resolution. So they just look gorgeous on these, uh, on these big screen flat TVs. So let's go into photos. And again, it shows me, you know, all my photo albums in my library and pictures just stroll on by here. Um, it's a really wonderful way to enjoy your photos. And uh, so let me go down to, you know, road trip here. So you get the idea of what you can do with this. It's just an incredible way to watch your photos. So we think that ITV is going to be pretty popular for movies, TV shows, music, podcasts, and photos. We're pretty excited about it. So that gives you a little taste of it. All righty. So again, ITV, I think it's the most stunning graphics we've seen on a television. Movies, TV shows, music photos, podcasts, and more. What do you think? You like it? <laughs> we think it completes the picture here. And now I can download content from iTunes and enjoy it on my computer, my iPod, and the big screen TV in my living room. We think it's really going to be pretty great. So. ITV lets us enjoy our media on our big screen TV. Works with iTunes on PCs or Macs, right? Just like iPods. Works with PCs or Macs. It's coming in Q1 of 2007, and we're going to announce the price today. We're going to price it at just $299. You can get great content online, download it over the internet. It's now playing on a computer near you. It's now playing on an iPod near you. And it's coming soon to a TV near you. So that, 
I hope gives you an overview of what we're doing. You know, Apple's in your den now, right? It's iTunes running on a Mac, hopefully, or if not a PC, for music and all your content, including movies now. Apple's in your den. Apple's in your living room with ITV, driving your big flat screen TV. Apple's in your car with over 70% of the 2007 model cars offering iPod connectivity now. And of course, Apple's in your pocket with iPods. Your den, your living room, your car, your pocket. And I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of where we're going. So thank you very much for coming today to our special presentation. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks. But we do have one more thing. You know, all this technology is amazing, but it really all comes down to artists, doesn't it? Because if they don't create this content, then we haven't got anything to listen to or watch, right? And we like to remind ourselves of that as much as we can. And so today, we've got a great artist with us who's going to perform, and that is John Legend. John Legend. John Legend's debut album went triple platinum. This is huge. And he was a phenomenon at the Grammys this year. He won three Grammy Awards. He was tied for the most nominations. He got nominated for eight awards and won three. Best Rhythm and Blues Album, Best Rhythm and Blues Male Vocal, and Best New Artist. He's got a new album coming out next month called Once Again. And so I would really like it if you would join me in welcoming John Legend. very honored to have John here. It's a very special treat. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you all again soon. Thank you.